Tonight on Plus Politics, we discuss the Lagos governorship race as PDP, APC, and LP, and others battle for the soul of the state. Delta PDP governorship candidate Oborevori escapes gunmen attack. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's still plus politics, and my name is Nyamgul Agaji. The race for the governorship election in Lagos State has reached a crescendo. The main combatants are the incumbent governor, Babajide Songolu, of the All Progressives Congress APC, or Lajide Adediron, a.k.a. Jandor, of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and Mr. Badebo Rotsvivor, of the Labour Party, LP. The Lagos State Guba candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Abdulaziz, or Lajide Adediron, has revealed that he had a discussion with Peter Obi of the Labour Party and his principal Atiku Abubakar on forming an alliance with his counterpart in the former party, uh, Badebo Rotsvivo. He said he couldn't agree on the alliance because he didn't want to gamble going into the election, claiming that Badebo Rotsvivo had two pending court cases bordering on his candidacy. Well, joining us to discuss these, uh, to confirm or uh, refute the claims, is uh, Wole or Wole, or Lagundoye, member campaign strategy team, Jandor for Governor Campaign Organization. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. Uh, that thing he talked about, Jandor talked about the alliance, was a, a bit of um, a few days ago. Mm. And um, what, how far so far right now? Are you going into this election with any alliance whatsoever, not just the Labour Party? Um, as things stand um, currently, um, and like you heard him say earlier this morning, we are op the we're open to the alliance. He's very open to the alliance. Uh, but I think it, it has to be an alliance that will uh, make sense at the end of the day. And the point that we're making is um, for, for us to go into an alliance must be one that will allow for the objective for the alliance to be met. And, and as it stands today, his candidacy is clean. Um, he didn't have any litigations after his primaries. I'm talking about um, Jando. Uh, and, and everybody knows that. Um, but we have a couple of uh, litigations that, um, uh, that are um, encumbering the candidacy of um, uh, GRV, of the Labour Party. And so we're saying if there's going to be an alliance, let's put our best foot forward if such an alliance is going to... I don't know whether that, that's going to come up tomorrow or not, but as, we, as things stand today, um, given um, the way things are, those are the, 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 that, that alliance hasn't come together yet. I don't seem to understand why um, GVR's uh, court cases would be a problem, except the alliance was to make him the governor instead of Jando. Was that what was on the table? So the, the, the conversations that we're having is, if we're going to have an alliance or whatever it is, mm -hmm. whose whose platform would that be? You have yeah. two different political parties. Mm -hmm. You have Labour Party, you have um, PDP. So on whose political, because they have to go, they yeah. can't have both of them going with two separate uh, platforms. And that's where it is. If you're going with the Labour Party uh, platform, the Labour Party pl candidacy is, is encumbered with, lit with, with lit litigation. What does that mean? It means that should that go through, it will be now usurped via the courts uh, at the end of the day, which will make the whole, um, um, the whole um, exercise futile. And, and that's what the that's what the argument is that we're putting on the table. So if you're going to go into an alliance, go with one that you're sure of that has no encumbrances, that is clear of litigation, that will definitely deliver on the mandate and the purpose for the alliance in the first place. And that is where the conversation is. What if it had gone the PDP way? How do you mean? Yeah, because if if it had gone to the Labour Party, uh, the 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 candidate had some issues. Yes. What if it went to the PDP? No, well, th that's what we're saying. We're open to that. So and, and that, that at this moment, moment you're open to that. Of course, we have always been open to that. If the platform that we're putting in for this alliance is the PDP platform, of course we're open. It is not encumbered. It will definitely deliver on the mandate, and, and that's what it is. Because what that what that means, and like you heard him say um, earlier on today, as things stand now, maybe we will we'll win b b by not that much of a ma heavy margin. But with that alliance, I feel that we will not have a landslide, basically like, like, like what he said. So, so it's, it's, we feel that the chances are better together, you know what I mean? But it has to be based on 
us achieving the aim in the first place with an, uh, um, a candidacy that is not encumbered. And that's how um, we believe this will be achieved, as opposed to now going with an encumbered uh, platform that will only mean that we'll go into court the next time and then it will not be a sub. Particularly given the fact that at the center you have, uh, you know, we know you, you, you have a, 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 at the federal government level. So, I mean, you understand what we're saying. Okay, uh, well, there's also this talk that in some parts of Lagos State, um, PDP has more, more or less collapsed its structures into the Labour Party. As I give you an example in mm. Ekbe. Uh, we heard some time ago or a few days ago that one of the chieftains of now Labour Party, because it was Boot Party, uh, was, uh, there was an attempt on his life. And one of the things that he said was supposed to be part of the campaign uh, or the reason they went to Ekpe was to make sure that the PDP that had said they were going to join forces with Labour Party will come out uh, to declare that. We don't know whether they did that declaration or not, but we'd like to, you to confirm whether there's a crack in the PDP in Lagos State as you go into the elections. So, I mean, to the best of our knowledge and what we know, um, PDP has not collapsed its gubernatorial structure into any party. We have no such alliance, no such agreements on the table, um, and I can confirm that to you. Um, John Doe, our candidate, is going head on into the, um, uh, the elections uh, because we believe in his candidacy. You must be clear, and, and, and let, let me state this. This journey did not start yesterday. It didn't start on the 25th of February either, all right? And he's not riding on any wave. He began this journey eight years ago. He had a vision, and, and that's the first time. And that, for me, is, what, is, is why we're passionate about his candidacy because it, it's, a, it's a candidacy en entrenched in pure vision and passion to want to lead a state properly and deliver the true dividend of democracy. You talk to some people, particularly people, um, elites, and they say Lagos is working. I have no doubt Lagos is working. But Lagos can be much, much more than it is today, particularly given the kind of revenues that we generate on a monthly basis. And that's the point that we're making. And for someone who has put a vision together and who has driven this vision, building a grassroots support base for himself, for the past eight years, you, you must understand what, it, what this means. He's transversed every single word in this state. It's something, something that no political um, gubernatorial candidate has ever done before. And he's done that with a, with a means of getting to meet the people that he intends to govern, understand the terrain, the lay of the land. So he knows where the shoe pinches the, the, common, the common citizen. He's done all of this. I mean, for us, we believe that that is the man for the moment and the guy who understands the structure. And he understands the political um, machinations of the ruling party as it is today. Why? Because he was there. He understands. He studied the, the whole terrain. He's the guy that will get you to that, finish, uh, the, the, that promised land and get you and ensure that we turn things around properly and governs properly. He understands that. He, he, has, that, he has that street smartness. You see him. And he's not one. He's not a self-made person. I mean, the guy that was born in Mushi to a liberal family, his Muslim father, Christian mother, and you understand, he practically raised himself up with the help of his mom, a self-starter. And that's the kind of person you want to keep behind, somebody who knows how to build things and get things done. And that, for me, is the, choice, the kind of choice that we have on the table today. Someone who has ambition, if you check it, since 1999, every single governor of this state has been handpicked. They woke up one morning, they got a phone call and say, come and be governor. They did not have ambition. Everybody had ambition to do was the, was the bad from getting there. This is the first time we'll have a truly independent candidate, a candidate that's not encumbered by any godfather, who will look at the problems of Lagosians and take a decision and will need a second level um, uh, approval to, to get things done. And, and that, for me, I feel so excited about that. And Lagosians should, 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 should they, they, they see, see that because, I, like I said, he's not right now anyway. There's no godfather. You see him, he's the one particularly speaking for himself. I, 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 and I, as you heard him explain this morning, there are a couple of um, uh, dy the political dynamics within the PTB. But he's been able to, uh, to, so to sort of ride that wave, and he's where he is today, purely on his own merit. And those are the kind of attributes I believe you want to see in your own leader. You want to be proud that my governor has this kind of things, a self-made man, self-starter. Those are the kind of things that I want to see in a very progressive state like Lagos, a formal state. A state that we claim has the fifth largest economy in Africa. That, for me, is the kind of person you want to lead. Not people who, are, who, who just jumped on a wave or who are not properly ready for, for this. 
I, I, I get the sentiment about the wave and all that and everything, but this is about preparation. And there, something has to be said for being prepared, okay. having that vision yeah. uh, and that drive to want to achieve. Preparation is one thing, but yeah. let's take Lagos State, uh, Lagos State as a garden now. Yes. He wants to be that seed that will germinate in this garden. In this garden, they, there are other grasses. There is manure that was given to other grasses as well, and he has to feed from there. How does he intend to be this one-man island that will break away from the establishment and make Lagos the Lagos of his dream? Because now from 1999, as you have said it, Lagos has been ruled by a particular set of people. We all, we all agree that a particular set of people, maybe yeah. one man, but maybe a lot of people that are sitting together and drawing the strings. It happens anywhere anyway. Okay. But maybe the one of Lagos is annoying to some of the people. So how does he intend to, to survive, especially the first four years, uh, in a Lagos that has been ruled by the people who know, know the corners of the room to sweep? You, you, you recall I said that he's, he cut his teeth, political teeth, in the a APC. So he understands the inner machinations of that political party. So which means the godfathers of APC are, by extension, his godfathers as well. So you need to understand, you, you don't have a godfather until you are in a position of, of, of power or there's something. He's never been elected before. He's never had any appointments in the political space. So he couldn't have had a godfather. So, I mean, godfather doesn't apply to him in this case. And we need to be very clear about this. There is somebody who, by the virtue of his profession at the time, was, was very close to the corridors of power in Liga, as it were there. And he used that as an opportunity to understudy how the political terrain in Lagos was. That's where he caught his teeth. That's why he understands how the politicking goes. So he understands that. He understands the ups and downs of how those things move. And, and that, that is perhaps the biggest advantage that he's got today. Yeah, he has that. On, or has that, uh, what do you call it, in his palms. And he can use it. To the point that you made about uh, how will he navigate and survive, that is how he intends to. Because he, and he's not doing this alone, by the way. He has the, 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 the structure of the PDP behind him as well, as, as you know. And the PDP is only over one man. It is, it's, a structure, it's as old as APC in this, in this state. So all, all that is what he plans to leverage on. And also he has a robust team of people who understand how Lagos works, who have the experience that he is going to work with as he, as, as he moves into um, governance of, of, of the state. All that is in the plan. Like I said, this, he just didn't jump into this. It's something that he has carefully thought about something that he's deliberated on and he's taking his time to plan over the years. So there's no rush here. There's nothing happening that is sudden. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's ready for all the things that have been thrown at him. We've known that it was going to be, it's not going to be easy. I mean, we've known that. But talking about Lagos State, I'm talking about a monopoly that's been there for nearly 24 years. You just can't go there and expect them to hand you, but you have to go there and fight for it. And he has resilience to do this. And that, for me, is perhaps the best you can put forward. He has resilience. He, he, he is his own man. His own and that's, like I said, that's what you need. Like I, like I mentioned earlier, Lagos can be much more than it is today, particularly given the revenues that come to us on a monthly basis. But where are we? We're teetering. The blue layer, the, our, our rail system has been up and start, up and start, and it's still not even started till today. I mean, that's something that Dubai and all the Ethiopia and all that did in less than three, four years. They, they had their, their, their thing up, up and running. Why is it taking us this much time? And with these revenues coming on a monthly basis, you are not seeing exactly where this thing is going to. And, and, and people, we can't be comfortable for that, with, with that kind of uh, situation. And that's the point that we're putting on the table. For me, I, I believe that this next Saturday is a time for uh, uh, um, negotiations to make the true claim of wanting a state that they can truly call their own. And this is, this, this is what the promise is on the table. Okay, um, well, let me go back to the united front or a divided front of the PDP that I asked you earlier on. Okay. There is rumor. I will always call it a rumor, no matter where we hear it from, <laughs> until you confirm or deny it. Okay. There is this rumor that uh, the leader of PDP in Lagos State, as far as we know, mm. who is Bode George, yep. uh, seemed to be backing a different candidate from the candidate of the party. Maybe because of some wranglings within the party when just after the uh, primary, primary elections and all that. So is this true? Or if it is true, how are the chances looking like for the PDP with some of the chieftains of the party against the candidate? So, so um, I mean, 
we, we know things have happened and we can see it's out there for everybody to see. Um, we, we've seen this um, support from uh, Bodejo, like you mentioned, we've seen that. We've seen the, um, the Lagos, Bataki people come together and so we, we, we've, seen, we've seen all that. So it's no longer news, not a rumor uh, 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 either. And he went through a, a, a clear narrative of how that journey went. I mean, for everyone that watched the interview this morning, you saw him say all that. But for us, it's even beyond that. That's, that's on one side. The major conversation on the table is about the candidacy of this young man. He's 45 years old, by the way. And a man who is determined, who has focus, who, has, who is self-driven. That, for me, is the story here that we need to, we need to tell. Politics will always be politics. You know, how poli there are always different dimensions of politics, and it, it will always be played. So you need to expect that. Anybody that thinks he's going to walk into a political space and expect things not to happen, I mean, you should go back home and sit down. I mean, that, it, so, so you will expect all these um, intrigues to play out. But the major focus, we shouldn't take our eye off the prize. Put our eyes on it. And the prize here is that the, 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 the leadership of Lagos State is at stake. And we, we, we have a very golden opportunity to turn things around. This monopoly that has been upon our necks for the last 24 years, we have the opportunity, Lagos, to change that and turn the narrative for the better. We can be much, much, much more than we are today. And that's the conversation that we have on the table. And that's the candidacy that Jandor yeah, well, is pushing. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just concerned because I've seen very good men <laughs> beaten by the bog of politics when they yeah. get into office. Yeah. You're a good man. You get in there and you come out and we're looking at you like, um, was this the same man we used to know? And that's why I'm concerned about, okay, this Jando you're saying is a good man. What is the assurance that when he gets there, he's going to continue to be that good man, that resilient person who will not play by the books written by someone else? I explained something to you. I said we took time out to, on the, to look at the political terrain. Like I said, this journey didn't start today. It was something that we've been building over the last couple of years. Um, we sat down and looked at what happens to all the guys that have come out to rule. Where did they get it right? Where did they get it wrong? What were the things that they needed? How, what happened to all of them? Uh, and we weighed all these things critically, did workshops, sessions on all of this, got people to give us their comments. So we understand where the pitfalls are. We understand what you need to stand on, the pedestals to stand on, and we we, those things we understand. The guarantee that I'm putting on the table is we know, this is someone that we know, someone that we've been with, and for people that know him, know how strong-willed he is. And that, for me, are the ingredients that you need to get things done. He promises and he delivers. And he, he understands that it, it won't be easy. Let me not, let me not, let me not, let me not uh, uh, say different. But as long as you have a focus and you have a destination, and we will be answerable. For me, one of the biggest things that he comes on table, to, to this table with is the fact that he is in the, he's an independent candidate. No godfather asking him to do something otherwise. He what, are some, what, of, what are some of the antecedents that he has that people will have confidence in that he will be a good leader? He's a self-starter. That's somebody that is self-made. That, for me, is... We're not talking about someone that was born with a silver spoon or that went to some Ivy League school and everything and all that. We're talking about somebody who was self-made. He was born in Mushi. So if you understand, he went through that and came out to be who he is today. He, is the, he owns a media, a media uh, uh, empire, core media. I'm sure, sure, sure you have that. I'm, I mean, he built himself up to that point. I'm just, and these are little things. He's been an employer of labor for a long time. Has a lot of people that he's an employer, people that he's trained. He has, the, he has the philanthropic foundation that he ensures he empowers people on a regular basis. I'm thinking of somebody who understands the year in. He has seen where the shoe pinches for a lot of downtrodden people, the people that have been forgotten, and he understands that. So he's not one that will come out and will forget where he's from. And that, that empathy that he has is one of his major, major attributes. And for me, once you have that, what we, what we demand of our leaders, and if our leaders can have this, we'll be a much better nation, is what, called, is what is called, what I call compassion. And that's something that he has. Once you have compassion, I have conscious, you, you, you have that consciousness in you. You, you're definitely going to be a leader that you definitely will, um, will deliver on your promise. The most important part of this is the fact that he's not encumbered. No godfather that will tell him to do otherwise. Once you have that, your, your own man, you take your own decisions. It is clear. You've put together a blueprint. You have a manifesto. We have a manifesto. It's there on, uh, online for people that want to see. Those things are things that will hold him up to. And guess what? He has that corporate experience, having, having run the business, you understand governance, you understand governance at that point. He will ensure that people are brought up to speed. He will carry everybody along. He's not a, he's a unifier. 
he's been across all the divides. He's he's he's, he's at home with the with the with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with our guys from the southeast. He's at home from, with our guys from the north. He's at home for the guys with, with, with the middle middle bed. He's going to all the people, send them everybody that makes Lagos Lagos. He's at home with everybody, and that is who you want to lead you in the fire. As long as you are in this state and you, you are part of contributing to his prosperity, you are a friend of Jando. Well, I, I don't know. When you use the word unifier, we're, we're wrapping up anyway. When you use the word unifier, a lot of things come into my mind because right. your principal at the national level used the unifier and the party w was in disarray just before the election. In River State, the governor was not there. We had the G5 <laughs> and all that. The unifier became a... Is there a word like this unifier? <laughs> right now, I hear that two ministers, former ministers, and three other pe persons in Kebbi State have been suspended by the party PDP. And uh, in uh, River State, we heard that uh, the party didn't really go. They, there is an Atiku camp, there is a Wiki camp and all that. Thank God it's not, the, okay, I hope it's not the same thing in Lagos State. We can only wish you well in, uh, on Saturday. But just a final word to Lagosians. You've been talking to me. Talk yeah. to them now in no, like no, one minute. For, for me, I, I, I think uh, Lagosians, it, it's important to look at the candidates that you have before you. Um, who amongst this, the candidates is a self-starter? A man that understands what needs to be done. This is a guy that's planned for this. He had the vision. He's put the, 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 um, all, the, all the, all the ingredients needed to build a movement. He single-handedly raised the movement. You've heard of the Lagos for Lagos movement. Mm -hmm. It came from him putting things together. He has a grassroots followership, large grassroots followership across all the 20 local governments of Lagos State, where people are willingly following his, his, his lead, simply because they believe in the vision that he's got. And he saw that. He's not someone that just came, just fell from somewhere, or he's riding on some godfather, or there's a wave that he's riding on. He's a self-made, and that for me is very, very important. And I'm talking about Lagos State politics, how it's been played. Once you remove the encumbrance of a godfather, and we need to make that point, I, I, I can't, I can't overemphasize it. Once you remove that encumbrance, you become a man that you are now focused on delivering for the people, and totally for the people. You can you open, and what is about uh, Lagos? Open up Lagos' economy so that other players can come into it, and we'll all be beneficiaries to, for, or, 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 of, that, of, that, of that move. That is what we need to do. This is a man that can do that. He is ready. And you need a man for the moment. Again, we say you need somebody who is not easily cowed or you push over or it doesn't understand where it is. He's 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 a true Lagosian. He understands um, what, what's going on. He understands how to communicate in the local dialect as well. I mean, he, he doesn't need <laughs> Don't to bring that. No, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm not saying Don't bring true true, true Lagosian, true true yeah. Lagosian. So uh, true and true. And for me, this is someone that you need that that is a man for the moment. And, and I can't overemphasize enough a true self-starter who is ready to lead who has all the um, the ingredients that is needed for him to lead at this moment because you can't go and want to take power and think that it will serve to you you have to be determined enough you have to have all that that needs to happen he knows all the things that need to be done and the fact that he understands how the ruling party operates from the inside it's a major plus for him so whatever antics or tricks he'll be right there waiting for them and that for me is someone that you need if you vote for PDP on Saturday, your votes will be protected and they will count. That is the man that we need for this state to move us forward. Okay, well, like I said, we say uh, good luck to uh, Jando, good luck to PDP uh, and all the people who are contesting under the platform. That's all we can say now. And we can also say to the people that Saturday is a major decider in Lagos State. Well, we've been talking with Wally uh, here on the program, and we do hope that um, people will turn out on that day because there was so much fear. I know, I know. So, That's uh, another thing I need, I need to put in, if you, so, if, if you will. Um, there have been conversations that have gone on. We've gotten assurances from um, the, yeah. the police and other okay. security agencies right. as well. People should not have any fear. They should come out and vote. Thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, that's the much we can take from him. Uh, like I said, we wish him well. And we're going to take a short break. And when we return, we'll be talking with a candidate of the People's Democratic Party, far in Delta State, who said that he escaped uh, assassination a few days ago. Stay with us. <laughs>